This is the mathematics iceberg from most well-known at the top down to the least well-known at the bottom, and I'm gonna explain every one of them. Starting with common knowledge. The four operations, one, two plus one, two equals one, two, three, four, and in reverse, four minus two equals two. Three rows times five columns makes 15 cells, and if you've got 15 cells and three rows, then you must have five columns. Boom, PEMDAS, this is the order of operations. You do parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. If you don't do this, then you get a completely different answer. Some people use different acronyms like BODMAS, BIDMAS, BEDMAS, GEMDAS, PEDMAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Graphing, if you've got an X axis and a Y axis, then you can find a point using coordinates. But if you need to find a line, then you can use an equation like Y equals X. If you plot all the points where the X coordinates equals the Y coordinates, then you get the diagonal line y equals x. You can also plot other lines like y equals minus 2x plus 1 or y equals x squared. Pythagoras' theorem says that if you've got a right angle triangle and you label these two sides as a and b, then the third side c can be found using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pi, if you've got a circle and you know the diameter, then you can find the circumference using c equals pi d. And if you want to find the area, then you half the diameter to get the radius and then you use a equals pi r squared. Pi is just a really, really, really long decimal number. Systems of linear equations. If you've got two unknown variables instead of just one, then you need two equations to solve it. What you do is you look at the coefficients of one equation which match the coefficients of the other equation or match with a multiple. In this case, we have a match with a multiple, so we multiply the entire equation here by two. So we now have a matching coefficient and we can subtract the second equation from the first equation to get a single variable equation and solve for one variable, then substitute to get the other. But not all equations are linear. Some equations take the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and to solve it, you can either be a skibbity sigma and use the complete the square method, or you can be an and use the quadratic formula where you just plug in the coefficients a, b, and c into the formula to get x. AP calculus. To find the steepness of a straight line, you just take any two points on the line, form a right angle triangle, and use the equation changing y over changing x to get the gradient. But if the line is curved and you want to find the gradient, then you can't just pick any two points, you stupid little leprechaun with no legs. Because the gradient at this point is different to the gradient at this point. So if I want to find the gradient at this point, then I have to move the other point closer and closer and closer and closer, and the closer I get, the more accurate the gradient. So to find the exact gradient, we want the limit as the change in x tends towards zero of the change in y over the change in x. And this is known as the derivative of f of x or f prime of x. And it turns out that for any polynomial function, to find the derivative, you just take each term, multiply it by the exponent, and then reduce the exponent by one. You can also go backwards by taking each term adding one to the exponent and dividing the coefficient by the new exponent. This is called integration. Number file fanboy. On one Thursday morning, number file posted a video titled one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 equals minus one twelve. Now, this wasn't an April Fool's joke, nor was it posted by someone with a head full of beans. This was posted by university physics professors and they were being genuine. This caused essentially an apocalypse in the YouTube mathematics community because one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 is infinity. Number file pulled a massive unqualified tutor and simplified the concept to the Point where it was actually incorrect. What they should have titled it is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 diverges to infinity, but using a special technique called analytic continuation, we can assign it a value minus 1 12th. But it probably wouldn't have gotten as many views. If i equals square 1, then e to the i pi equals minus 1, because e to the x equals this infinite series called the McLaren series, not the car, and using e to the i x, you can split the series into even and odd values of n, which gives you the infinite series of cosine x and sine x. So e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x. Then if you plug x equals pi, you get e to the i pi equals minus one. Most people describe angles using degrees, where a full turn is 360 degrees, a half turn is 180, and so on. But in pure math, you generally describe angles in radians, where a full turn is two pi radians, and a half turn is pi radians. But some people think that instead of using pi, we should use this number tau, which equals two pi, because then a full turn will be one tau, and a half turn is a half tau, and so on. I happen to agree with this because it also equals Terence tau. Rational numbers are any number that can be represented by an integer a over another integer b. Any number that can be written down in full, including all the decimal digits, is rational because it can be represented by the number without the decimal point over a power of 10. But numbers like pi, for example, go on forever, so you can never represent it by an integer over another integer. Fermat's last theorem states that there are no positive integers x, y, z such that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n, where n is greater than 2. It remained unproven for 350 years until Andrew Wiles finally proved it in 19. 
1994 using elliptic curves, modular forms, and Taniyama Shumarawa whale conjecture. Yes! Nailed it. Mandelbrot set. Start with Z0 equals 0, then pick a point C, which is a complex number in the complex plane, and plug it into this equation again and again and again forever. If the sequence of Zs diverges to infinity, then the complex number C is outside the Mandelbrot set, and if it doesn't diverge, then it's inside the Mandelbrot set. If you plot all the complex numbers in the Mandelbrot set using the real axis and an imaginary axis, then you get this fractal. In topology, a donut is equal to a mug, and if you don't understand anything else about topology, then just be happy that you still have good mental health, and you don't have post-traumatic stress disorder from learning topology. Taxicab numbers are the smallest numbers that can be expressed as the sum of two positive cubes in n different ways, e.g. taxicab 2 equals 1729, since it's the smallest number that can be expressed as the sum of two positive cubes in two different ways. Leonard Euler was a Swiss mathematician and physicist who essentially invented most of modern mathematical notation, and Carl Friedrich Gauss was known as the Prince of Mathematics and was famous for the fundamental theory of algebra, Gaussian elimination, and his early works in non-Euclidean geometry. If you take a strip of paper and twist one side, then connect it together, you make a Mobius loop, which technically has only one side. Phi, or the golden ratio, is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. Some people believe that if you use this number in art, it makes things more beautiful. The Klein bottle technically has no insides, but it can still hold liquids because of its unique shape. If we want a really big number, then we can start with 3 plus 3, 3 times 3 makes it an even bigger number, 3 to the power 3 makes it an even bigger number, but what if we want a really big number? Well, we could either sit you down on a weighing scale and hose you down like a hippopotamus, or we can use Nuth's up arrow notation to get 3 arrow arrow 3 gives us 3 to the power 3 to the power 3, and 3 arrow 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 3 is called G1, which is already so ridiculously big that I can't even fit it on the screen. To get G2, you do the same thing, but with G1 number arrows, and you just keep going all the way up to G64, which is Graham's number. Fibonacci sequence. Start with 0, then 1, then to get the next number you add together the previous two numbers. This is the Gaussian integral, and if you use some clever polar coordinate tricks, you can find that it's equal to root pi. The Collatz conjecture is based on two simple rules. Start with a number n, if n is even, then divide it by 2, if n is odd, then multiply by 3 and add 1, repeat the process again and again and again, and the conjecture is that no matter what number you start with, you'll eventually end up with 1. To this day, no one has proven it to be true or false. Game of Life is a simple game with an initial grid of either dead or alive pixels and four simple rules. A live cell with zero or one neighbours dies, a live cell with two or three neighbours stays alive, a dead cell with exactly three neighbours becomes alive, and a live cell with four neighbours dies. This sounds really boring, but it actually creates very complex structures, and there's even some giga nerds who have made a game of life in the game of life. Pascal's Triangle. Start with 1 in a hex grid, and then to find the numbers underneath, you add together the two numbers above each cell. So this cell is equal to blank plus 1, which we assume the blanks are just 0, so you get 1. Keep going with this, and you end up with Pascal's triangle. This has some really cool properties, like if you colour in only the odd numbers, you get the Sapinski triangle. The Basil problem asks for the exact sum of the infinite series 1 over n squared from n is 1 to infinity. One day, Leonard Euler oiled himself up and got to work by treating sine x over x like a polynomial, as you do, and expanding its infinite product of roots, then comparing the coefficients of x squared to get that the infinite sum is equal to pi squared over 6. Obviously. A perfect number is an integer that equals the sum of its proper divisors, excluding itself. Masen primes are primes of the form 2 to the p minus 1, where p is also prime. For example, 2 to the 3 minus 1 equals 7, or 2 to the 5 minus 1 equals 31. It turns out that every even perfect number can be written as 2 to the p minus 1 times a Masen prime. The OEIS stands for the Online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. It's basically a massive database of all the known integer sequences. So if you input basically any sequence, it will tell you the name of the sequence, its formula, related sequences, and where it appears in mathematics. 